So now we're going to deal with some funnier cases, but we don't know that they're funnier yet. So we'll just behave as normal and see what happens. So as we take a look at factoring this trinomial, I've got a 1 out on the front of my x squared term, so I know it's going to be an x and an x. And 5 is prime, so our only options for this guy are 5 and 1. But we need to find what combination, positive and negative, will multiply to give us positive 5, add to give us negative 1. So when we're multiplying to get a positive, what has to happen? Signs are the same. Either they're both positive or they're both negative. So those are our two options. And we'll see if either one of them works. So if they're both negative, when I multiply, I get my positive. Or if they're both positive, we'll multiply and get positive 5. But let's check and see if we get the middle term that we want. So we get the first, the x squared, but our outer is going to give us negative 5x and then minus x. So I've got negative 6 in the middle here, but I'm looking for negative 1. So this one's out. Let's try the next one. Again, first will give us the x squared that we want. Outer, positive 5x. Inner, positive x. So we're looking at positive 6. That also isn't negative 1. That one's out. But those were only two options. So what does that tell us about this polynomial? That trinomial can't be factored further. I can't break it down with the knowledge that we have now. It can be factored. It's just not nice. Um, and we don't have the skills in this class yet. So, when it can't be factored down any farther, it is said to be prime. A prime polynomial can't be factored. In more advanced courses, polynomials like this can be factored and are not considered prime. But again, we don't have that knowledge and that skill set. So, we just talk about prime polynomials. If we can't factor it, it's prime. All right. So, we've dealt with all of the cases. When the signs are the same, when they're different, when we have prime polynomials. So, now we're going to throw it all together and work on a few. First thing we always want to do when we're factoring is look for a common factor first. If it has one, we need to take it out of everything. So, first example here. Look in between each of these three terms. Is there anything that they all share in common that we can take out? Greatest common factor. So, look in between all the coefficients. They're even, so we can take out a 2. And how many factors of x do they all share in common? One of them. So the lowest power is what we can take out of everything. And when we do that, what are we left with? So I'm left with an x squared minus 10x. And when I take 2 out of 50, I'm left with 25. And x out of x, it will be gone. Okay. So now we have a trinomial, three-term polynomial that we can deal with. We know how to handle these cases when, when there is a 1 out on the front. So, whatever we factored out, the greatest common factor, needs to follow along. We can't forget to write him. He needs to hang on. And again, 1. So, I know it's going to be an x and an x. So, what are we looking for? Combo, multiplying to 25, adding to negative 10. So when I multiply, I need it to be positive, but when I add it, I need it to be negative. So what does that tell me about my signs here? They both need to be negative. And what combo of factors will get us there? Negative 5, negative 5. When we multiply, we get our positive. When we add, we get the negative 10. So we factored it as far as it can go. And we can rewrite this in another way. I've got two factors that match exactly here. So how do we concisely write that? Still have our greatest common factor on the outside. But x minus 5, how many factors of that do I have all together? Two. So we could write it as x minus 5, that quantity, squared. Because that's telling me this times itself two times in total. Factored as far as we can go. Let's look at the next one. 
I don't like that order. Hopefully you don't as well. First thing that we should do is turn it around. I want it to be in descending order. Highest power first, decreasing as we go down. Okay, but we haven't dealt with a negative out on the front. So, between all of these, I can take out a negative and negative 1. When we take that out, every single sign is going to change. So, now I've got x squared, which we know how to deal with, positive 3x, and negative 10. So, we took out a negative. Now, we want to factor this guy. So, there's a 1 out on the front. So, now it's going to be an x and an x. And I need some combination of factors, multiplying to negative 10, adding to 3. So we know we're going to need 5 and 2. And which one needs to be positive? The larger. And the smaller needs to be negative. So I've got x plus 5, x minus 2. Multiply, yes. Add, yes. We get that middle term. Okay. A few other ways that we could write this, though. Instead of having the negative hanging out on the front, we could distribute it in. Okay. So if I give it to this first term, then I'm looking at negative x minus 5 times x minus 2. If I kind of attach it or distribute it into my first term. But we don't have to give it everywhere, because the negative times the negative is a positive, And we don't want to change it. The other option, we could have given it to the second pair. Kept the first one the same, and had negative x plus 2. Okay, these are all equivalent, those three. Whichever one you're comfortable with, if you like leaving it on the outside, go with that. I'd say this is probably the most mathematically sound in terms of factoring, because we can't break it down any farther from there. But if you see it in a different form, it's equivalent. Still legit, this looks a little bit different from the beginning. All right, so using all of those skills, next page, take those four, factor them completely. So the first thing we always want to do with working on these problems, see if there's anything in common that we can factor out of every single term. So looking at part A, what do they all share in common? A factor of x. And when we take that out, what were you left with? Now I have two factors in my first term. One in the second, none in the last. Now we know how to deal with those. There's a 1 out on the front. So I know it's going to be an x and an x. And we need to break up negative 12 into factors multiplying here, adding to 4. So what do we need? 6 and 2. And what combo of positive and negative? The larger thing needs to be positive. smaller one needs to be negative. Factor it as far as we can go, and we could FOIL it. Then distribute our greatest common factor back in to make sure that it's true. The other option, how else could you see this written? Changing the order around. Multiplication is commutative. So if you reported it like this, still equivalent, still the correct answer. For B, look in common between, there's nothing that we can factor out. And there's a one out on the front, so I know it's going to be an x and an x, just to get started. And what about 7? He's prime, so my only options for the constants are 7 and 1. And I need it to multiply to be positive and add to be positive. So that tells me my signs should be positive and positive. But when we FOIL to check, does it give us that middle term that we're looking for? No. I still get x squared, but now I'm getting plus 7x plus x. Eight factors, and I'm looking for two. But, this is the only way that it could theoretically factor. So what does that tell us about this guy? It is a prime polynomial. We don't have the knowledge so far to be able to factor that. So we can't. All right. For part C, again, we don't know how to deal with a negative out on the front yet. So we need to factor that out of everything. And is there anything else in common that we could take out? No. So if we take out the negative, now I've got x squared minus 3x minus 18. 
And we've got a 1, so we know it's going to be an x of an x. We need a combo that's multiplying to negative 18, adding to negative 3. So we need 6 and 3. And what combo? Positive, negative. The larger term needs to be negative, smaller one, positive. Again, the order doesn't matter. You could flip it around. And you could also distribute it in to one of the terms. But I like that form. We'll leave it there. And very last, almost there. Look in common between all three of these that we can take out of everything. Factor of 3. And what else? Smallest power of x is what we can take out. When we do that, what are we left with? x squared plus 8x plus 16. Could be the math on the side. Okay. So now we can handle these. And don't forget to keep writing out the greatest common factor. We know it's a 1, so it's going to be an x and an x. And I have positive, positive. So what does that tell me about my signs? Both going to be positive. And we need to break up 16 into things and multiplying there, adding to 8. So it's going to be 4 and 4. It's factored as far as we can go. But another way to report this is going to be what? 3x times x plus 4 quantity squared. I've got two factors, it times itself, two times in total. So now we have the skills to be factoring these guys when we have a 1 out on the front. And again, very first step we always want to do, see if there's anything in common that we can take out of every single term. Make the numbers easier on yourself if you can, work from there.